Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go back and tackle one of my least favorite people, biblical gender roles. So <clears throat> grab a drink, grab some popcorn, if you vape, grab your vape, if you smoke, grab a cigarette, whatever, and sit back and wait for me to absolutely lose my mind. Alright guys, so we're going to be looking at Biblical Gender Roles blog again. I've kind of avoided it for mm, probably over a month now, mainly because this man gives me a massive headache. He gives me a massive headache because he always puts men up here and women way down here on the bottom. Um, but for some odd reason, I decided to go and look on his blog, and I came across this blog titled, My Mom Doesn't Want Me to Be a Homemaker, and he posted this on October 8th of 2019. And he starts it out with this, supposedly he received a comment from this young 18 year old. So I'm gonna read her comment and then we're going to kind of go through it. So she writes biblical gender role saying, I am a recent high school graduate in parentheses in May. For several months now, I've been reading many blogs like yours. Stop now. And I would, and I just would like to say thank you for transforming my life. It may not be too late. I am an 18 year old female and prior to graduation I've always been asked what my career uh, what career I want to go into. I've always had trouble figuring it out because I've ever only wanted to be a wife and mother as the Bible says. Oh we've got problems. My mother has been pushing me towards a career in medicine as a doctor simply because they make a lot of money and are noble. I'm backing the mom. I've chosen to take a gap year before college, which of course has made my mom upset, as she should be. I have told my mom that I don't want to get into so much debt from college, yet she is still pushing me towards it. I've been raised my whole life as a Christian and by a single mother, since my father was very abusive when I was a child. But I was never taught about biblical gender roles, as you should not be. My mom has never lived a life according to the Bible's gender roles. I can see why. I would like to ask you how and where can I find a husband who is traditional in the biblical sense and how I can convince my mom that college and, and a career is not what I am supposed to do. Um, don't. My church does not teach the things that you write about, so I'm hesitant to go to my pastor in fear that I will be pushed into college and career, as you should be. And she signs it, Sherry. I already have a headache. Okay, do I believe... That this is an actual post from an 18 year old no I do not I seriously think that he came up with this on his own as a way to push his agenda I'm sorry that's how I feel um, if this is true I hope somebody finds this girl and sets her down and explains to her the way the world actually works because at 18, I'm sorry, you don't know shit. Um, at 18 years old, you may think that this is the way you want the world to be. Um, but darling, it's not. Um, but of course, Biblical Gender Roles takes this as an opportunity to start dogging out this girl's mom. 
Um, he calls, he starts in with this whole thing about, because your mother was hurt, she's projecting her life onto you, and she wants you to go into a life like she's had to live, and she wants you to get a college education and go on to a career path so that you don't need a man. She's pushing the feminist agenda. How can I say this? Every normal parent wants their child to have a life that's better than theirs. Okay? Every normal parent wants their child to go on and do better than they did. Every normal parent wants their child to have a life that is less stressful and less hard to live than what they had. So an education and a better career is the way to achieve that in the day and time in which we live. So for my parents, like my dad, my dad didn't have a high school diploma, but he had a career in which, yes, he had to work very hard, but he was able to support his family. My mom had a high school education but it still required her to work in a factory in which she ended up getting permanent nerve damage in her hands, which disabled her for life. So my parents instilled into me that you get an education. You finish high school, you go on to college, you get an education, you get a better career. Me, with my son, and pushing the same. Now my son wants to go into a career where, in which he can help people. He is dyslexic, so for him, he already knows that college will be too hard for him because of his learning disability. So he wants to go into the realm of law enforcement. That scares me, being a 911 operator. So he wants to go into the field of law enforcement in the area in which I'm a 911 operator. I'm trying to push him more into like firefighter in the area in which we live because I know how my fire guys work because I'm, a, I'm the dispatcher for the police, fire, and EMS in the area. So I'm trying to push him into the other area so that, because I know the kind of calls that they go on, I know the kind of support and backup staff that they have and those kind of things. But I'm encouraging him on, okay, this is the kind of education you need. This is the kind of things you need to study. This is what you need to work on. And I'm helping him in those areas because I am a normal, fully functioning parent. Let's move on to what biblical gender role says. He also adds, as a final dig of women, he says that women nowadays are forgetting what they were made for, which is to be wives and mothers. So we're just, you know, we're just supposed to be like bowing down to our husbands and popping out children. We don't have any other function in biblical gender roles, you know, whole mindset. Then he briefly touches on this new MGTOW thing that's going on nowadays, which is, in case you don't know what that is, it's men going their own way. But instead of talking about how guys are doing this, he blames women for men doing these things and says that it's just pretty much women dogging out men so men have gotten tired of it instead of them working harder on how they treat women to try to change the dynamics between men and women. He just says, well men have decided against marriage because of how women treat them and this is a new movement. It's all the women's fault. But, moving on. He goes on spouting some more BS about how women are horrible for another paragraph or two. And then he says that God's first commandment in Genesis 1.28 was to be fruitful and multiply. And that was, that is required through marriage. Okay, Nowhere in the Bible 
is there a commandment about marriage? Nowhere. You know why? Marriage was a social construct to carry on bloodlines and keep properties among nobility. That's when what marriages were started for. They were contractual agreements. This was not a godly hand down. This was a contractual agreement to keep bloodlines pure and to pass around property of the nobility. That's the reason why in the blue bloods, as they're called, there was so much inbreeding. But in biblical gender roles ideas, you know, God commanded marriage. There is no such commandment. And for that, I'm, I want him to cite me a source uh, because uh, Genesis 1 28 is not a source. It does not say marriage in Genesis 1 28. But anyway, we're going to move right on past that. And he moves on. Because, you know, she asked him where she could find a traditional man. Oh, makes my eye twitch. She asked him about where she could find this traditional man. And this, this idiot, this moron, biblical gender roles, moves on to tell this impressionable 18-year-old girl. She found a traditional husband online. Now, let's break this one down. He says, because 40% of custom couples who, ma who marry each year meet online. Okay, I can believe that. We are we have become a, pe a people of online. We've, we are attached to our phones. I even have my phone right here with his uh, blog pulled up so I can compare it back and forth to my notes that I've written out. Yes, we are a people of online. I get it. But you're telling this impressionable girl to go online to find a, a traditional husband. And then you make it even worse. Okay, so one, let's talk about online dating. Do you know how many creeps are on online dating, period? Just basic online dating. There are tons of creeps because most people use online dating for hookups. But one, she has no way of vetting these people. Two, she seems kind of naive. But let's go into this. He breaks down what she should do. He tells this naive, innocent 18-year-old girl to put in her dating profile that she wants a, I, I, I'm going to put what I summarize his stuff as because it sounds way better, that she wants a dominant man who she will be submissive to, that she wants to have kids with that person and raise them in the ways of the dom and submissive life because you're going to be raising them in the Christian lifestyle so you are going to teach your girls that the male is dominant and the female is submissive you're going to tell you know you're going to teach your boys to be dominant over women you're going to teach them these ways so you're teaching them the dom and submissive lifestyle you're also going to tell them that you want to be kept at home because you're going to be the homekeeper. She doesn't want to go get a job. She wants to stay at home. You want this girl to put that in a freaking dating online profile. What is wrong with you? Are you stupid? Wait. I forgot who I was talking about. Disregard that last question. Of course you're stupid. You're just setting this poor, innocent, naive girl up for every creep on the internet to take advantage of her. You fucking moron. She's dumb for asking you these questions in the first place. You're dumb for answering them, but yet again, you're giving horrible advice. Let's move on. Because biblical gender roles is not done yet. Of course he's not done yet. He still has more horrible advice to give. 
Now, see, gender, bi gender biblical, biblical gender roles cannot be done yet because he still has to go back and attack this girl's mom because it wouldn't be him without attacking this poor, innocent woman who raised her daughter on her own. He goes back and he starts back on his mom, on this girl's mom. And he says, in regards to your mother, give her the scriptures teaching the doctrine of gender roles and list off scriptures to, for, for this girl to give to her mother. But here's the problem with that BGR. There is a commandment in the Bible about this. Remember the commandment of honor thy mother and thy father? Well, BGR, let me throw this up to you. For this girl to go back and be like, well, mom, you're wrong, and start throwing scriptures in her mom's face is a slap in that woman's face. Because let's look at this. That mom wants what's best for her daughter. Okay? She wants her daughter to go and get an education. She wants her daughter to have a good career. That way, her daughter never ends up in a situation that she found herself in. And you say that that's her projecting what she went through. Okay, that may be. That very well may be. Because you never know what kind of situation you're going to find yourself in. Here's a problem. Her mother worked and sacrificed but still raised her daughter as a Christian. Still made sure that her daughter went to church, still taught her daughter the Bible, still did all of the things that a Christian does. And now you want this girl to go back to her mother after all that her mother has done for her and throw scriptures in her face about biblical gender roles. What do I smell? I smell hypocrite. That's what I smell. And you're teaching this girl how to be a hypocrite of her mother. And that, my friend, is the reason why a lot of people leave Christianity. That right there is why people leave Christianity. Then he goes on in the very next paragraph, and he has this highlighted in blue. Biblical gender roles does that. He has he goes through his long blog post and he highlights certain things. This is the first sentence of that next paragraph. It says, God does not want women to be independent of men any more than he wants the church to be independent of him. Then he goes on to say, sometimes men will fall and abuse women just as women sometimes fall and abuse men. Divorce happens, abuse happens. But God wants us to have faith in his design and ultimately trust him when things go south. Okay. So what are you saying there? This is what his point was. His point was that you that if this girl can never convince her mom of her biblical gender role to be a homemaker, she must stay firm in her decision to be a homemaker. It says each of us has a choice in this life. We can live by what our feelings of what our feelings and by what our life experience has taught us or we can live by faith in God and his purpose for our lives this is my whole thing you 
you're talking to this girl and you're giving her all this advice and you're trying to tell her to break a commandment that is an actual commandment and feed her all of this fundamentalist BS that is not commandments in the Bible. And remember, you're doing this and there's only 10 commandments in that Bible. It's only 10. Marriage didn't make that cut, buddy. Marriage never made that cut. So, but honoring thy mother and thy father made that cut. So just remember that when you're telling this girl to disrespect her mother by throwing these scriptures in her mother's face. And he goes on. And he ends out this BS by taking yet another swing at this girl's mother. And he says that this girl is lacking the guidance of an elder Christian lady. Now, this girl's mother raised this girl on her own. She raised her to be a Christian, but that's still not enough for biblical gender roles. No, 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 that's not enough for him. Because this mother is wanting her daughter to have the best. She wants her daughter to be able to provide for herself no matter what is in her way. No matter what circumstances come her way, no matter what happens. Guess what? Not everybody on the face of the planet gets married. Not everybody on the face of the planet has children. There are some people that just never get married. I have some friends that have never gotten married. I have some other friends that have gotten married and they've never had children. My husband does not have any children that are his own. It's just a fact of life. It happens. So, I'm just going to give you my honest opinion here. This mother wants her daughter to go to college. The daughter has decided to take this gap year, which is some bullshit. Graduate high school, take the summer, go to college in the fall. Just go straight through. But she's decided to take this gap year. If you're going to take a gap year, take your ass to work. But I'm going to tell you what has happened. And this I've seen from a lot of kids. The parents work very hard and they support their children. And once these kids hit 18, they're like, oh shit, now I'm an adult and I have to take care of myself. And they freak the fuck out. They still want somebody to take care of them. They don't want to take care of themselves. You know why? Because as a society, we have pampered these children way, way, way too much. Stop doing that. Teach these kids what a work ethic is. Teach these kids how to earn some money and teach these kids that if they do not get an education, they have to work or they have to get the hell out of your house. My son, when he hits 18 years old, if he's not in school, he has to get a job. And if he does not have either of those, he has to get out of my house. I love my kid to death. I will do anything for my son. But he will either work or he will get an education or he has to get out. I am not going to kill myself to provide for somebody that is too lazy to provide for themselves. Luckily, my son has seen how hard I've had it over the years and how hard I have worked to provide for him and when his sister was alive for his sister. And he, at 14 years old, when it was summertime, got out here with his cousin and they walked the streets when they wanted to buy something for their video games and mowed yards to raise money to buy stuff for their video games. My dad is sick with cancer. He goes out there every weekend and does stuff around my parents' house to help my dad because my dad can't do it. So I am lucky in the fact that my son does have a work ethic. 
some of the rest of y'all need to kick it in gear and teach these kids some work ethic. But this is not the worst. This is by no means the worst of these biblical gender roles situations. Because I screenshotted some of these comments. And it gets even worse. One comment this guy posted on here was a couple of thoughts for Sherry. You say, I've been raised my whole life as a Christian and by a single mother since my father was very abusive when I was a child. Unless you personally remember your father being very abusive, quote unquote, then you might need to reconsider your relationship with him if you are just going on your mother's word that he was, quote unquote, very abusive. It might be a total lie because your mother did not want to submit to him and obey him as the Bible instructs. She needed an excuse to divorce him and, quote unquote, abuse is the go-to excuse for many women. Your father might be a source of support and direction for you, just something to consider. And then, in the second part, he suggests that she go check out the transformed wife. Now, to this asshole, I'm just going to say this. I got out when my son was two months old from a very abusive relationship. When I say very abusive relationship, the night I left my very abusive husband, I, can, I had to hold my daughter, who was almost three, and completely cover her with my body. Now, my daughter was severely disabled. And I had to completely cover her with my body and take a six-hour ass whooping, which resulted in the imprint of my cell phone being bruised into my back. I had knots this big on my head and on my forehead. And I had bruises all down my back and arms. Do you think my son remembers that? Of course not. He was two months old. I left before that SOB killed me. Okay? Okay. Now then, moving on, this other girl writes, my heart goes out to her. My mom was much the same way, even though she had a good husband who stayed, my dad. She was adamant I go all the way through grade school before even getting engaged. Um, yeah? Did you want to get engaged in the third grade, you moron? For those who don't know my story, I did go to college, met my husband there, we got engaged, and my mom kicked me out. They dropped all financial support and kept my car. I've known another woman who had pretty much the same thing happen to her when her single mother decided her daughter <coughs> her daughter shouldn't marry but became but become a nun. When the daughter fell in love, the mom turned psychotic and abusive. Mine did too. Thankfully, she went back to normal shortly after the wedding. So in counseling, this poor girl tried to get as, so much freedom now. Try to get as much freedom now as you can. If she's the type I'm familiar with, once you start rebelling against her plans, never go to college, never going to college or getting married before she thinks it's right, she's going to turn on you and become your worst enemy. And you'll be so lost and depressed and depending on your financial situation, you could end up on the streets. So be careful, recognize now that if she's pushing you this hard, she may have some weird psychological thing going on where she may flip. Hold on. Where she may flip into an abusive role, even if she's ever, even if she's never ever abused you before. Figure out getting your own car that you can pay for, your own phone you can pay for. Try to find a job now 
that will help you if you need to move out. Maybe it's overkill, but being able to live your own life is very much worth it to follow your own values long term. That's the problem. This lazy girl doesn't want to get a job. She wants to live off of somebody else. Did y'all not catch the drift from her whole little comment in the beginning? Because she doesn't want to go to college, the mom said she had to get a job. And she doesn't want to do that. Why would she want to do that? This is the thing with these fundamentalist groups, okay? Your very fundamentalist ideals do not translate into the real world. Nobody's going to give you anything for free. Nobody. You have to work for it. Money doesn't grow on trees. It doesn't fall from the sky. You have to work for things. The same girl that posted the last thing posted another thing. She said, I would absolutely refer this girl to online communities rather than local churches, but either way, both should be carefully held up to a, a held up to the mirror of scripture. And see that I just I don't get this. Like I'm gonna post all of these at the end of this video for you guys to read. You could pause and read these if you want to. I've given myself a headache now because biblical gender roles does this to me every time. So I'm gonna put all of the um screenshotted comments at the end of the video so you guys can look at them um, in the comment section down below let me know what you think of this whole 18 year old thinking that mom should support her until she can find a husband and get married so that the husband can support her thing instead of her actually either getting a job or getting an education so that she could have an education and a job of her own um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell. I upload six days a week. And it will just notify you when I upload a new video. In the description box down below, I will uh, post the link to this. If you guys want to go through this convoluted mess of a blog and give yourself your very own migraine. Also, my... Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and email are all going to be linked down below so that you guys can go and contact me on all of those platforms. If you have anything that you want me to cover, you can suggest it on any of those platforms or you can email it to me. That's going to do it for today's video. I'm going to go take some Excedrin and try to knock this headache out, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, guys.